Broadcasting from Boston, Massachusetts, the Smart Cities podcast is the only podcast dedicated to all things Smart Cities. The podcast is the creation of ARC Advisory Group's Smart City Practice. ARC advises leading companies, municipalities, and governments on technology trends and market dynamics that affect their business and quality of life in their cities. To engage further, please like and share our podcast or reach out directly on Twitter at Smart City Viewpoints or on our website at www.arcweb.com backslash industries backslash smart dash cities. Welcome again to the Smart City Podcast. Today we're broadcasting live from the ARC Forum here in Orlando, Florida. We have a very fascinating subject and guest today. Uh, our topic is first principle chemistry simulation. And our guest is Lisa Williams of OLI Systems. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much for having me here. Hey, well, it's great, it's great to have you. Um, let's just get started with a foundational question. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to this um, chemical chemistry simulation ecosystem? Sure. So I've uh, spent the last year working with OLI, and OLI themselves have a, a very rich history of uh, scientific research, um, you know, bringing that first principle chemistry simulation to the customer. They've done the research, they've worked in the R&D areas, the simulation areas, and really provided it to this you know, smaller niche, almost boutique group of folks. But in this last year, they've made the decision to go ahead and, and expand that out to the operations area. So being able to take those, new, those chemistry insights that maybe used to use as post-mortem on a piece of equipment and bring them over to uh, the operation side to do preven- prevention and detection of corrosion and scaling. Wow, that's, that, that is fascinating. Um, what are the challenges in this domain? So right now you've got a lot of uh, empirical type analytics out there. They're taking all this information and they're they're doing correlations and trying to find patterns. But we're using first principles analytics here. This is science-based information. So trying to help customers understand the difference and be able to see the value of that, um, you know, prediction of I have a corrosive environment occurring in my system right now. I need to take action now to correct it before I damage it. So stop driving looking behind and start driving looking ahead. Same with scaling. So, so Lisa, for, for those, of, for those uh, in our audience that might not understand the, uh, what is a first principle, can you just give us a basic overview of that and why, why is that important? Sure. So on first principles, what we've done is, is taken a set of data and we've actually regressed that so that we can say these are the conditions um, that are occurring you know, through a range and then these are the chemical reactions that are going to happen. So this is science-based, right? This is, again, not correlation. So we're able to say that you know, given a, a specific set of water over a pr- pressure and temperature range, these are the type of conditions that are going to occur. So precipitation of minerals coming out for scaling, let's say. Um, when you get to a certain pressure and temperature, they're going to start to form on the pipes, clog it up. You lose capacity. You lose efficiency. And, and vice versa on the corrosion, right? You start to have a corrosive environment. You start to deplete the metal inside of the, uh, the piece of equipment, and then you have a loss. So how does that differ from correlation, again, for our listeners? So the difference there is I'm putting into exact words what's going to happen. It's not what has happened. So it's more looking ahead. Based on science. Based on science. So there is no ambiguity or probability. It is what will happen. Correct. How does OLI Systems use all of this technology um, in various verticals? So we've got a couple examples that we've been working through recently um, and showing to customers on the scaling and corrosion side. One of our real powerful ones is overhead crude unit, right? We're being able to take the water analysis, the pressure and temperature, and create integrity operating windows out of that to say, here's where you should be driving the plant for the amount of wash water that you need and the temperatures that you want to run so that you don't uh, create a corrosive environment in that overhead unit. 
because once that line's gone, your unit's down. And that's a very you know costly problem for customers. So being able to help them drive the plant tighter. So normally they're getting these predictions in these operating windows. They're only a year old, right? Or they're a year old, I should say. They get them once a year. They're not getting them very frequently. But if they're actually able to see them in near real time on their dashboard and able to see that the um, unit is becoming corrosive, they're able to correct it quickly. Trying to quantify it in addition to that, what has happened since my last turnaround? Right? So you just put in my technology. I don't have to learn your stuff. I don't have to sit and watch it for six months to figure out what's going to happen. Because it is first principles, I can go and tell you what has happened since your last turnaround. How many times have you put that plant into a corrosive environment and how much have you depleted from that? Right? Get those corrosion rates going and tell you, are you going to make that seven-year goal for your turnaround? Maybe not. You need to start now moving from unplanned maintenance to start planning and scheduling the maintenance early so that you don't have a loss. Right, you want to keep that plant either running or down. You don't want to have the transient of it coming down on its own, right? Uh, Lisa, you focused on scaling and corrosion. Are there other applications that that chemistry simulation is used for? Yeah, it's a great question. So, uh, soft sensors for pH. We're able to predict pH in these environments with a higher accuracy and, and reliability than most probes. Probes are, you know, they get fouled, they get um, corrosion on them, and we're able to actually use the lab uh, data and those pressure and temperature in the section of the pipe or the piece of equipment and be able to tell you what that pH is consistently so that you can have a better uh, insight into there. And that goes into dosing and stuff too, right? So I'm, I'm maybe make, mixing a batch in a reactor. I'm able to forecast or, or predict, I should say, what the pH is and what your target is and how much of the additive you need to put in. Uh, within, I mean, I could see broad applicability across all process industries, but you know, which ones uh, really embrace this? I would think it's some of the more, more forward-looking um, industries. Yeah, we're, we're doing a lot right now in the sustainability area, especially, um, you know, thinking about the, the processes that contribute to sustainability. <clears throat> so we need batteries. So we're working a lot with lithium processing and trying to do that in a cleaner way and do the recovery. Because, again, we're aqueous chemistry, right? So we want to get this out of the, you know, water. we got geothermal and things like that that we're, you know, helping to do the forecast for, you know, when's the right time to go collect that stuff out of your... Uh, out of the system. That's that's very fascinating. Can you talk about so if this would be geothermal plants that? Uh, yeah, some of the research that's coming online now. <coughs> yeah, as so we're well looking as, at supporting them on a design basis as well as the continuous operation. That's fascinating, and and as well as recovering lithium in the water supply. Yeah, in the recycling, yeah, okay. in the recycling part of that, yep, is what I understand. So that's, that's pushing my limits a little bit because I'm on the, the automation side, so, you know. I, right. Yeah, we can right. certainly learn more from the from our scientists um, on staff. Yeah, I mean, back, back to, you know, the process control industry, um, it's, uh, you know, what are the major markets that you see for first principle chemistry simulation? Our, our strongest competitor, not competitors, our strongest customers right now are the oil and gas, right? So it's, you know, scaling and corrosion and upstream, chemical dosing and upstream, being able to tell them what they need to put in the well in order, or, you know, what the well situation is so that they can put in the right things. Um, you know, the corrosive environment inside of uh, crude overhead and a couple of the other units. Again, it has to have, you know, X amount of water in there for us to be able to, to work with it. Industrial waste water. <coughs> um, uh, trying to think of some of the other ones off the top of my head all of a sudden. <laughs> but um, lithium, uh, let's see, mining, power utilities, anything with a heat exchanger, right? Being able to help you understand what's happening inside that heat exchanger in a chemical sense so that you can get back your efficiency, right? Because you you know, you're trying to exchange that. If you've got fouling inside, how do you treat it? And that's where we can help with that as well. Great. Um, you know, we would perhaps remiss that early, early in our session today, we didn't talk about really the history of, of OLI very much. Can you perhaps give us a, um, a background about OLI and, um, in the past? How have they evolved? What, what products do they have? As well as perhaps move into you know, what do you see for the future? Sure. So OLI has uh, been around for a little over 50 years now. They've done all the scientific research to map around 6,000 species against 80 periodic 
uh, elements or elements in the periodic table and what the reaction is between those for corrosion and scaling, right? That's, that's the most significant database that's been built out there for this type of work. Um, so with that, we have the stream analyzer and our OLI studio product that does that basic, you know, what's going to happen here? Is it going to precipitate? It? Then we have um, scale chem, which is uh, a more detailed uh, blocks for the scaling. We have corrosion analyzer, exactly what it sounds like. And then we have the uh, flow sheet ESP tool. And this allows you to actually build up a process and look at the um, corrosion and scaling inside of that. So that's what they've been doing for the last 50 years, building that up. <clears throat> Recently, they've, you know, they've mainly stayed in the, in the R&D simulation group type areas, but they've seen you know, what, what's happening out there with digital twins and digital transformation. So they've built their new cloud APIs. And they took each of those pieces of software and turned them into an individual REST-based API that's you know, addressable as an endpoint. Now you're able to automate those. So it's not just run once, put in new parameters, run it again. It's actually running you know, upwards of 30,000 calculations a day against maybe your 18,000 wells. And being able to do that consistently for your customers or for your own flow assurance, and, and that's on the small end, right? This is scalable. It's all in the cloud. So they are looking forward to you know, what the future is with digital twins and providing that information and seeing that operations can benefit greatly from these monitoring um, type situations when we employ the cloud. That's, that's a fascinating application I'd like to learn more about. So talk, can you talk a little bit more about the oil wells and the, um, do I get, you know, um, what type of updates do I get in terms of data points per oil well? Is it daily, weekly, monthly? Um, so some of that depends on what you're providing to us, right? So are you, do you have good temperature and pressure indicators on that well? How often are you taking water samples? Some of them are maybe, you know, pretty frequent, you know, once a month. Some of them may only be every six months. But if the pressure and temperature are changing, you can still run the simulation analysis because it's still going to change what precipitates out of the, the liquid regardless of, you know, if you got a new lab value or not. So being able to continuously monitor that uh, is a good thing. Now, the length of time that you would want to do, it's just dependent on the solution you're trying to, to build. Uh, it could be you run it every two minutes on a crude overhead unit so that you can see that Better, but on a well, you might only run these things once a day, right? You run it through once a day just to see what is the buildup. And that's just it. It's how much, by pounds, of scale is built up in this well, and what kind? What's the species? Is it calcite? All right, what all these different things um, that can be building up in that? And that allows, again, the flow assurance engineers to have new insight. It allows the chemical vendors to do the treatments um, more accurately using less chemicals, helping them to become more sustainable for the environment, right? Less chemicals being poured down there is a good thing, right? So being uh, able to accurately target that. Yeah, in, in, indeed. I, um, I need to go back and ask you, uh, I, I was a bit surprised when you mentioned the word species. Of course, I defaulted, like most people, to uh, it's an animal. <laughs> I did too when I first started, right? Cause, you know, that wasn't my background at the time. But I waited, and, and I just learned that there are many species of, of scale. Yeah, it's, it's all those minerals and stuff that are in the water. It's the things that are in the water. And, I mean, now, now I go back to, to an earlier comment that, um, that OLI has documented uh, how many of these species? 6,000. And their reactivity, you know, how they behave against... 80 different items from the periodic table. That's that's fascinating. Of all, all, all these 6,000, do they are they on a continuum, or or are they actually standalone like compounds? Or yeah, is, is that, that not? Uh, I, yeah, we'd have to call the scientists for that uh, part of it. Yeah, we yeah. Don't have that, that, that's, that's, that's the edge. Go there, that's the that's edge of my knowledge there. Yeah, that's, that's just, <laughs> it's just fascinating. Um, if I'm, um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, now that you mentioned that you have some applications that might be sampled every two minutes, I'm guessing that's not a manual process. Correct. How does that work? So we're working with our customers to use what they have today. I don't want to put in a new platform. I want to be your trusted engine in the cloud. I'll consume the, the data and the calcs that you want. I'll run them, and I'll send them back to you. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to store your data. I'm not going to keep your data. It's all yours. I, it, we don't want to add a platform. So we work with the customer to see what they have today and then tailor the solution. 
This could be integration with your data historian, your data lake. You could have, you know, some of the um, new digital twin platforms have API connectivity built right in. We may need to help you with some writing some Python, and these are all skill sets that are new to OLI, but have been, you know, found in the industry for a long time, but now come to OLI so that we can enable our customers with that. So with you, OLI, if um, if I as a as a customer need a solution, uh, is it the, for for that low latency rapid update rapid test scenario? Is that always a cloud based solution, or so or, or or is that can that be had by a standalone? Uh, currently, we're we're software as a service, so we're purely in the cloud. Which, which makes sense in, in, in yeah. 2022. I mean, that's the industry direction that, you know, so, on-prem is, is certainly not, you know, you don't get the rapid updates, you, you don't get the rapid fixes, you don't get the new chemistries quickly when they get published. you got to wait and install those, you know. And we're maintaining the system. We're, you know, reducing that burden on the IT. Are you are you delivering a an edge device to that customer for that reading, or is all the calculation being done in the cloud back at, Back in your place. All the case, all the uh, calculations are being done in the cloud. Yes. So we 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 definitely strive to look forward, you know, at the edge devices and can we be one of the modules that they contact and send us the you know send us those packages so that the information gets set up and then sent to us to to bring in and, and reset and tr- you know um, what do you do it uh, calibrate equipment. That, so, you know, on a skid, et cetera, create those integrity operating windows for the control network, basically. Get validated back on their way back in t- from the uh, edge and then use them to the system. That would be our ultimate goal. That's something I'm looking for new partners to handle with us. Great. Well, I, mean, we, I think we answered part of my next question, but you know, what do you see for the future? For the future, we, we really want to concentrate on making the best chemistry simulation. I don't want to make the best visualization. I don't want to make the best of these data platforms. I want to work with those partners in order to bring our best chemistry simulation to them and then use those for our customers so that our customers don't have to pick one technology and run with it. We can work with all of them, right, all the different data historians, visualization packages. We want to be very agnostic in that. And, and we are today, right? We We have... With, uh, on our desktop, on desktop products, many of the process simulations actually have our Alliance engine. We're agnostic. We're in Aspen. We're in KVC. We're in Honeywell. We're in all of those. They can enable the OLI technology through there on the desktop. But again, that's run once and done, right? That's not automated. So finding new partners that want to um, work with us on their platforms, their automated platforms, to bring us in. So. So to to uh, you know build your ecosystem, you're of course you're looking for the end user customers. Mm-hmm. You're looking for platform providers. As, as New well. ones that the customers may not have yet, right? Yeah. When the customer doesn't have a platform, who are they working with? In particular, with? yes. Yeah. Um. You know, we're we're nearing the end of our time together today. Uh, do you have any last words for our audience? Uh, well, you know, thank you to the ARC for uh, being here and putting on the, the conference this week. It's, it's been really good. It's been nice to be back in person. It's good to see the enthusiasm. Um, the change in the message coming from um, the vendors and the realization that they ha- we all have to work together and that we have to jointly come together to the customer and present our solutions as um, something that's, that's been a real powerful I'd say almost sub-message. I don't know that it was something that was necessarily supposed to be out there or target, but uh, it's definitely coming through strong, and, and I look forward to seeing more of that and uh, want OLI to be a big part of that. Well, th- thank you, Lisa, for joining us today on the Smart City Podcast here in, or- in Orlando. Um, uh, before we go, can you provide us your contact information if someone in the audience would like to reach out to you? Sure. So uh, Lisa Williams uh, at OLI Systems. Uh, you can reach us on the web. We've got our contact page. It's uh, olisystems.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn, Lisa Williams with OLI Systems. Well, thank you again, Lisa. Thank you to all our, our listeners out there. This has been a conversation with Lisa Williams of OLI Systems. And we look forward to seeing you again on a future episode of the Smart City Podcast. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim.
Broadcasting from Boston, Massachusetts, the Smart Cities Podcast is the only podcast dedicated to all things Smart Cities. The podcast is the creation of ARC Advisory Group's Smart City Practice. ARC advises leading companies, municipalities, and governments on technology trends and market dynamics that affect their business and quality of life in their cities. To engage further, please like and share our podcast or reach out directly on Twitter at Smart City Viewpoints or on our website at www.arcweb.com backslash industries backslash smart dash cities. 